So welcome again, friends, to our final session of Brayfest. Good morning, afternoon, evening, night, wherever you are. Um, we have friends from right across the world who have been with us for the, some of, some of you have been with us for the whole weekend from very, very early in America to very, very late in Indonesia. So we just like to thank you so much uh, for spending this time with us. My name is Saima Daya and together with Fatima Ashraf, we are going to present for the final time our introduction. We are the co-creators of Ray of God. Ray seeks to share feminine spiritual wisdom and to help realize God in all ways and to align with justice, truth and beauty. The energetic state of the feminine is our guiding principle and holds our intention. And we believe that all genders hold a feminine and masculine within themselves. While we are women-led and women-centered, we welcome and encourage all genders to join us in a safe, inclusive space, God willing. Ray does not seek to present a voice of expertise. We see ourselves as travelers along the way and learning with each step. Our ideas are constantly evolving and we hope that you will join us on this journey to deeper consciousness. So the aim of this festival is to heal, harmonize and challenge. And our contributors have been speaking and will continue to on the broad theme of her space, how women create and claim or reclaim sacred and other spaces, literally and through reshaping narratives and giving voice to their views and experience as they discover their power and agency as women. We've been blessed to have welcomed over the course of this weekend, a truly diverse, intergenerational, interspiritual cohort of incredible contributors. Some of these have been religious leaders, some spiritual teachers, activists, academics, creatives, and so much more. This weekend was marked by the full blue moon, All Hallows Eve or All Saints Eve, and Samhain, the midway point between the autumn equinox and the winter solstice. This has been a time to honor the saints and we hold in our awareness that this weekend there have been many friends around the world in ceremony and prayer at the same time that our festival has been unfolding. So our intention has been to hold this space with prayerful presence. All of our sessions have opened and closed with moments of silence and some words of wisdom and we invite you to continue to listen with your heart and help us to create a container that can hold us all even though we are physically far away, we can still be connected in the virtual heart space. Fatima and I are deeply honored to welcome our teacher, Camille Hamilton Adams Helminski. She's been a student of the Quran and the traditions of the prophets for more than 40 years. She's the co-director and co-founder of the Threshold Society, founded in 1988, encouraging all to awaken to the divine presence in every moment of our lives. Camille has been working within the Mevlevi tradition of Sufism for over 30 years. She has produced over 16 books, including some of the first modern English translations of Jalaluddin Rumi, rendered a significant portion of the Quran into English in the light of dawn, daily readings from the Holy Quran, and offered poetic reflections from the divine attributes in 99 names of the beloved, intimations of the beauty and power of the divine. Camille has also helped increase awareness of the integral contribution of women to the spiritual path of Islam with her now classic guide, Women of Sufism, a Hidden Treasure. I'm going to share her um, website and social media handles if you'd like to um, check out some more of her work. Camille, thank you so much for joining and uh, coming on earlier than expected. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, dear one, and such a grace to be here with your dear hearts and God bless you and Fatima and all of your team who have held so beautifully all the unfoldings of these moments and uh, we're grateful to be here. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We begin in the name of that infinite divine reality the infinitely compassionate, the infinitely merciful. And we give thanks for the presence of dear woman stands shining in whatever realm she may 
be in this moment. We feel her very present also with us. And um, in honor of her presence and all the beautiful work that she is also doing and contributing, um, I would like to just take a few minutes of story um, because um, the wisdom of the native people is so important in this time. And um, inshallah, she may pop on and please let me know if she does so that I can complete more quickly what I might share. Um, but I'll take some moments with words and then inshallah, we will take some moments of silence and contemplation inwardly as well. But um, there's such a sense of the interconnectedness of things that comes through the native ways of understanding. And it was so beautiful um, to find that I would be sharing this space with your um, woman stands shining, who is standing shining here now. Um, because this was also with the full moon, the first frost here in Louisville and the time for the harvest of the squash that volunteered itself in our backyard. And we had an abundant squash harvest yesterday. And with some of the squash blossoms also nourishing us yesterday evening and just so full of life and just having volunteered themselves from the compost that we dug into the earth during this past year. So vibrant and alive from the mystery. And we witnessed this happening, you know, over and over again, the emergence of life from that depth of mystery. And this weekend is also um, a pivot point for this one um, in that a couple weeks before this weekend was a moment that this one was birthed and also the moments of our wedding anniversary 46 years ago and then on two weeks the other side is the moment um, when I received a call when I was studying abroad in college and my sister called and let me know that suddenly both our parents had died when I was 20. So we have on either side of us birth and death as we stand here and we don't really know sometimes how close that moment of return may be. My dear father, um, who was an artist and thankfully also handy, um, when this one was arriving, uh, it was a hurricane. Um, and uh, the power went out in the hospital. And so he quickly found a flashlight and went to try to help get the generator started so that my mother might give birth, not in the dark, but with some light. Um, and he was very, um, a faithful practitioner within the Christian tradition, and yet was very taken with the Mayan native tradition and the mysteries within that. And uh, on our honeymoon, uh, I took Kabir back to Guatemala where we had visited the year before my parents passed away. Um, and there uh, received a beautiful huipil. Um, it's a traditional Mayan clothing that I wore today. I don't know if you can see some of the beautiful um, embroidery with all the colors of the rainbow and the rain and the sun and that sense of everything being included. And it's so beautiful the way that um, the Native women would weave uh, even the fabric upon which they would embroider because they would use what is called a, a backstrap loom that is just a simple loom. Um, they would sit on the earth, on the ground, and tie one end of the warp threads to a tree. And then the other part would go around their back. 
and they would weave the narrow pieces. So this sweep wheel is made of three side-by-side -side pieces. So we have again that threesome in the oneness. Um, and the way that the, the woman who was weaving is in touch with the vibration of the tree as she is moving the threads. You know? um, there's so, just so much beauty everywhere. You know? And um, the way that you know, hearts have been woven this weekend, the way that the squash blossoms on the squash plant they're both male and female blossoms. And the female blossoms are the ones that are very close to the stem, that stay steady and sturdy by the stem to receive that nourishment that once when the, the bee visits the male blossom that has a, a taller stem and gathers the pollen and visits the female, then the female is supported in that womb developing and becoming the squash. And we're reminded also within the Islamic tradition, we have the beautiful names of God, Al-Hali, Kalbari, Al-Musawir. So these three aspects of creativity, of the encompassing creator, Al-Hali, Al-Bari, the one who is patterning, and Al-Musawir, the bringing into form and we find this, um, this integration of three aspects often to create that wholeness, whether it be the, the masculine and feminine that Amina was speaking about in Saima, you reflected back that horizontal reciprocity that is held within the divine and that interrelationship through the divine. And that, that, container, embrace, and vibration of love um, just is so nourishing on all levels for all of creation and is part of the pattern of the unfolding. And so uh, one of the aspects that this one wanted to share this morning um, before we move into a deeper uh, contemplation within that inward space is three aspects of a, a very loved prayer and one is a reflection within the Navajo tradition that's uh, called the prayer of walk in beauty and it's so reminiscent also of something that Christians know as the breastplate of St. Patrick, which is also very reminiscent of what Muslims would recognize as the light prayer of the Prophet Muhammad. And so just to share some of these words in recognition of how spirit is so deeply woven, you know, within human experience, um, no matter what labels of naming we may place upon things, that we all recognize these experiences of the mystery and that companionship of the heart that goes beyond words, but resonates through these glimmers of language and whatever language we may be given to speak. So this is the prayer version from the Navajo or Dine tradition. In beauty may I walk. All day long may I walk. Through the returning seasons may I walk. On the trail marked with pollen May I walk. With grasshoppers about my feet, may I walk. With dew about my feet, may I walk. With beauty, may I walk. With beauty before me, may I walk. 
with beauty behind me, may I walk. With beauty above me, may I walk. With beauty below me, may I walk. With beauty all around me, may I walk. In old age, wandering on a trail of beauty, lively may I walk. In old age, wandering on a trail of beauty, living again, may I walk. It is finished in beauty. And from the Christian tradition, a portion, there's a long version of the breastplate of St. Patrick, and then there's some shorter versions. And so I'll read a modified shorter version. And it's also sometimes known as the cry of the deer, and which reminds us, those of us in the Sufi tradition, of you know that gazelle voice, you know, calling to the beloved. And it begins with a recognition in the Christian tradition of the Trinity, um, and yet again we have you know these modalities of the three recognized within the one. So it says, I arise today through a mighty strength, the invocation of the Trinity, through belief in the threeness, through confession of the oneness of the creator of creation. I arise today through the strength of heaven, the light of the sun, the radiance of the moon, the splendor of fire, the speed of lightning, the swiftness of wind, the depth of the sea, the stability of the earth, the firmness of rock. I arise today through God's strength to pilot me, God's might to uphold me, God's wisdom to guide me, God's eye to look before me, God's ear to hear me, God's word to speak for me, God's hand to guard me. God's shield to protect me. Christ within me. And one understands also in this word, Christ, the anointed one, the one made sacred. Christ within me. Christ before me. Christ behind me. Christ in me. Christ beneath me. Christ above me, Christ on my right, Christ on my left, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit down, Christ when I arise, Christ in the heart of everyone who thinks of me, Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me, Christ in every eye that sees me, Christ in every hear, ear that hears me. And before we move to, to the light prayer of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings upon him, um, just a, a reminder too of, um, there's just one little line from the psalm that came to voice. Behold, you delight, God, you, the divine reality, delight in truth, in the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. So we have from beloved Prophet Muhammad this prayer of light. And it begins asking for light in the heart and in my grave. So one has that sense of that innermost heart, the secret of the secret within the grave of our being, within that mystery of inwardness, there is also light. Oh God, Grant me light in my heart, 
light in my grave, light in front of me, light behind me, light to my right, light to my left, light above me, light below me, light in my ears, light in my eyes, light on my skin, light in my hair, Light within my flesh, light in my blood, light in my bones. O oh God, increase my light everywhere. O oh God, grant me light in my heart, light on my tongue, light in my eyes, light in my ears, light to my right, light to my left. Light above me, light below me, light in front of me, light behind me, and light within myself. Increase my light. is dancing even in the darkness and the darkness is so beautifully holding the light. And someone mentioned yesterday the, uh, the dark night of the soul and uh, St. John of the Cross and we remember St. Teresa of Avila who was his mentor and friend and she and he both immersed in that contemplation of the divine reality within that enclosure, but opening to the infinite. And there's a, a beautiful passage that uh, she speaks of that infinite abode of the divine reality and all the rooms within which we are called to move, to witness that reality unfolding and living. And um, I, I have that here. I'll just read that for you because it's so beautiful. Um, she says, turn your eyes toward the center, which is the room or royal chamber where the divine abides, that sovereign. And think of how a palmetto has many leaves surrounding and covering the tasty part that can be eaten. So here, surrounding this center room are many other rooms, and the same holds true for those above. The things of the soul must always be considered as plentiful, spacious, large. To do so is not an exaggeration. The soul is capable of much more than we imagine. And the sun that is in this royal chamber shines in all parts. It's very important for any soul that practices prayer, whether little or much not to hold itself back and stay in one corner. Let it walk through these dwelling places, which are above, down below, and to the sides, since God has given it such dignity. We have so many beautiful voices and hearts reminding us of this immense dignity of the spirit that abides within each of us and all around us and sings to us through the trees, through the bees, through the flowers. So many graces pouring and we witness to that beautiful pouring through this gathering 
of sisters apart, of men apart, of beings apart, of human beings who filled with spirit. So, inshallah, may we take some moments now to just dive within that mystery that is so beautifully holding us all the time, even when we are forgetful, when we maybe come busy with any number of things, and even in our most noble efforts of caring for that which is most dear to us, that we keep returning to that infinite presence that is always breathing us, enlivening us, moment by moment. So may we return inward for some moments, breath by breath. We rest in this breath, this precious gift of life. Aware of all the directions above, below, to the right, to the left, before, behind, filled with spirit. Protected in grace. Strengthened by that loving presence. Breathing, being breathed. And with the breath, we deepen our awareness within the heart, within this infinite space of receptivity, open to the grace flowing in this moment. flowing to us from that infinite source through a non-dimensional point within the heart where we are closest to our sustainer. And in this moment, we open to the inflowing of whatever quality may be needed for each of us individually, for all of us collectively, for the well being of our hearts our bodies, our minds, our communities, our world, and universes, flowing from that sustainer of all worlds. Perhaps a word, a name, one of the 99 names, or perhaps just a known presence may be with us to carry forward 
in the next unfolding. We rest in this presence. Breath by breath. Enlivened by love. Strengthened by love. held within the mystery, opening with the light. And with the breath, we extend that love, that compassion and mercy in all directions around us. To all those near, those beloveds who may have passed on, and those who are yet to arrive. Breath by breath, breathing compassion and mercy to all that is. And with the breath and awareness of the heart and sensation in this body, with our feet upon the ground, rising into this space of air, supporting us. We continually open to that presence Nourishing, enlivening. For a few more moments, we'll rest quietly within this presence, breathing us, probably connecting us with everything that is. and returning our awareness within the heart. We open the ears of our hearts to a passage from the Holy Quran. This opening in recognition that in every completion is also an opening to a new beginning. Realm upon realm, we're spiraling. 
in knowing ourselves, all of creation, our creator, he, she, that one beyond all naming or genders. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. <clears throat> Al-Fatiha. Bismillah Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman to that one who is the sustainer of all worlds. It is to you we turn for help whom we worship and serve and praise the infinitely compassionate, the infinitely merciful, guiding and enlivening us breath by breath. Shukru alhamdulillah. Amen. Thank you so much, Kamilane. Thank you, dear ones. Thank you for holding this weekend, our intentions and our prayers. Always heart to heart. Let me have a question from Mary Elsa, who is uh, one of our contributors as well. So Mary Elsa, I'm just going to ask you to unmute. Hello, I, I am, um, that was so beautiful. I feel like a centered balm having been poured around the room and within me. Thank you. Mm. I wondered if you would would take a moment to uh, tell us how how you experience the divine feminine because I feel there's real bravery in the way that you just in the way that you speak it is so gently and bravely feminine um, and I just wondered if you could just talk about how you experience the dark divine feminine a little bit. I'd love to know more. 
ان شاء الله And first, let me say thank you so much for your beautiful sharings earlier. And it's such a, a grace to meet you in this virtual realm. Um, I've felt your presence for some time now with um, the previous unfoldings and just feeling you out there in the constellation of hearts and uh, just very grateful. And, uh, um, Something of that sense of um, the holy feminine has always been with this one. Um, and much of that perhaps comes through a sense of nature and the grace that is so present and palpable and we were gifted with a father and mother who were both very attuned to that uh, my father was a botanical artist and person of deep faith as well um, and also the you know the presence of Mary beloved Mary has been Uh, so present with this one all her life and um, so there is a sense of just the miraculousness of f the feminine being receptacle process um And also of the masculine, you know, recognizing, you know, that it is this wholeness. And, um, you know, it was so beautiful to witness that in the squash vine, because I hadn't really cognized that there were two different flowers on the same vine. Um, and I know sometimes there are, you know, the palms have a male palm and a female palm, and they, they have to... Um, be both present in order for it to be, you know, cross-pollinated and fertilized and then dates to arrive. And, um, and there's been a beautiful witnessing of that recently of, um, I hope I don't go on too long here, wave a hand if I, you know, <laughs> but um, uh, some, an archaeologist botanist discovered recently some seeds in a, uh, archaeological storage in Jerusalem um, that were 2,000 years old. And she asked if she could please try to sprout them. And she was allowed to take a few um, from a similar area to where Qumran, where the Dead Sea Scrolls were around in there. That area. And she was able to sprout one and it grew into a palm And then she realized it was a, a man. They named it Methuselah. And grown from this 2,000-year-old seed. And then she realized she was going to have to find a female to be able to make dates. And so she was on the hunt and found um, somewhere else uh, some other seeds that had been stored also from 2,000 years ago, from the time of Jesus and Mary and, you know, the whole. And she was able to sprout some more. And I love that they didn't know at first, you know, when they planted them, whether one was going to be a man or a woman. And uh, as palms go. And um, so they named them because they didn't want to leave them without names. So they named some. And one that they named Adam, they later realized was going to have to be Eve. <laughs> and, um, and it was the one that they um, had ended up naming Hannah, like the mother of beloved Mary, who they were eventually able to cross-pollinate with Methuselah and 
create dates and they just harvested the dates just a few weeks ago from these seeds that were 2,000 years old did they tell the time you, of Jesus. Did they tell you what it was like to eat one of those? Yes, and the person who had done all of this said, and thank goodness they tasted good. <laughs> <laughs> but just this, you know, the power of creation is just so exquisite and, you know, we we, you know, over and over again, we human beings feel like life is coming to an end, you know, and yet we're proven again and again, this power of rejuvenation. Mm -hmm. And so there's something in that also, I mean, it, it takes this interweaving, but to recognize the strength of the feminine resilience in holding. And I, it's so beautiful to me, um, in coming into the Islamic tradition, I had a real reverence for Mary in the Christian tradition and felt a real connection with her, but it was really coming into the Islamic universe that I really felt even more deeply um, that presence and the sense in which, you know, um, the surahs of the Quran begin with this Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and that that Rahim, that Rahman and Rahim, it comes from the root word of womb. So there is that sense of that everything held within this womb of being that is so nourishing and um, enlivening and caring and that love just pouring um, that one is rendered speechless. <laughs> So maybe I should stop there. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful energy. Thank you. Thank you, Marielsa, um, for asking that question. And Camille for a wonderful answer.